What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode two of the Franz Podcast. This is a podcast about nothing. And I'm your host, Frank, and this is... Andrew. And uh, one thing, if you guys are watching on Twitch, you can check us out on uh, Spotify. Yes. On Stitcher and, and on iTunes. Yep. Right? I mean, so basically everywhere. Like... Basically anywhere you get podcasts. If you're if you're listening on any of those, mm -hmm. uh, you can catch us uh, live sometimes on twitch.tv slash Frank Yep. Or if I upload the videos to YouTube, you can find it at youtube.com slash Frank So definitely check those links out. And when we start, when I'm back home in California, will we, st will we still be able to share a screen on Twitch? Um, we wouldn't be sharing a screen on Twitch. You would, I would, in like, you would share your screen with me or we, a webcam. Uh -huh. And then I would embed your webcam image into the overlay. Uh -huh. So like, I would just have a webcam of you right here. Oh, cool. So we'd both be on the screen at the same time. That's like in Power Rangers when they would, uh, they would call Zordon. Yes. No, no, it's Zordon. I know what you're saying. What's his name? His name was Zordon, wasn't it? No. But Rangers. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. that was Zordon. Rangers. Yeah, that was Zordon. I need you to gather in strength. That was 100% Zordon. Are you sure? I'm going to feel like a goob if it wasn't Don't Zordon. I feel worse than you because I confirmed it like four times? You were uncertain. Yeah. I was positive it was Zordon. So I'm the bigger <laughs> goob if it's wrong. You're right. Okay. Like, I'm telling you 100%, dude. Definitely Zordon. You're like, I don't know. Your apprehension gives you a plausible deniability, basically. Rangers. We need you to come together to verify aye, that aye, my aye, name aye. is that guy? Alpha. No. Uh, what? Was his name Alpha? No. Who? Aye, aye, aye. Maybe. That sounds right. Can someone I, in chat confirm if this was... Uh, what's Zordon. the little... Okay, so we got Zordon. That's right. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> People good. People in the chat asking, what's Franz? We're like, we don't really know. I don't know. It's just us talking. Franz is a podcast that Andrew and I started uh, like a week and a half ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, Franz is, is both a reference to the fact that we are friends. Mm -hmm. And also it's the first three letters of my name and the first three letters of Andrew's name. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, a nice little play on words. And it's also just a podcast about nothing. Because Andrew and I banter yeah. uh, about nothing so frequently that we're like, we could just make a podcast about this and people can listen to it and be like, wow, this is amazing because these are the exact same kinds of things that we talk about. It's the only way we can justify wasting this much time talking about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're recording it. I, we just we still feel like the world needs to share in it. You know, like, yeah, hey... At least I feel like it's productive now. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Here. And if you're driving to work, listening to it or streaming, watching it, you're like, well, I don't know. At least I'm on my downtime and I don't have anyone to talk to nothing right. about Right, so like right if you now, don't have so... anyone to have these conversations with, we'll have them for you. And uh, then you guys can listen and uh, be like, wow. Okay, so we actually got some comments on the last episode and they were like, this is this is exactly what I wanted. I'm like they're like I'm five minutes in and this is everything I could hope for. You know that makes me so happy because like again we talk about deep things as well and I love listening to like the business podcasts and all that. Oh for sure. But sometimes I'm just mentally checked out and I also, need to have nothing content. I want to be clear that there is 100% going to be a poop story on this episode. I know the first episode last week, uh, it was there was a lot of farts and poops and and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Yep. I have one more poop story for you guys that's going to that's gonna happen at some point in this podcast, and I just we, wanted to warn you about it. We had a whole conversation after the first episode. We were like, that went great. But, like, but we can't be whoops, the poop cast. We talk too much about poop, <laughs> and like that's it's low-hanging fruit. It's not low-hanging fruit. Like, it's I don't a want dingleberry people to be like, of a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people to be like, well, I think I've heard about enough of this. I get, exactly. I get the idea of it now. Yeah. Oh, we want to be clear that it's not a poop podcast or a fart podcast or anything of that nature. Right. Uh, I think we're just trying to talk about things that naturally happen to come up in conversation that we have a lot to say about. Yep. That no one would really talk about otherwise. So. Or, I mean, just amongst close friends. I feel like any close yes. friend group. Yes, I can agree with that. Has a lot of poop discussion. And we're close friends and we want people to feel like. Close friends. Close friends with us. Yeah. So, so you guys are welcome in. Welcome into our into our homes and our lives, and uh, we get to welcome talk about. Sir. And if you guys need to talk about your poop, that's cool too. You know, we're here to listen. You listen to us talk about our poop. So, you know, who are we to say no to deny you your your poop sharing? You that's know? right. We should probably like open some kind of like a uh, smorgasbord of of questions or comments into this. You know, like a mailbag. Of, yes. Oh my God, we need to have a mailbag. That's why you have the Twitter and the Gmail accounts. So oh. you just you need to give your you give your people a forum to communicate with you and to throw That's or, massive. Or like Patreon. Right. You know what I mean? Like and Patreon you can be like if you're a five dollar guy every month you can put in like a question and we'll answer it and discuss it on on an episode, you know? That's what selling out is. <laughs> 
So here's the thing. You can't be a content creator in 2019 without selling out. Your entire that's, business model is based on selling out. That's actually true. And I think that it's a new level of selling out where you're saying, I don't have to sell out and you don't have to encourage the sell out. But if I didn't sell out, I can't do this. And if you don't want to encourage the sell out, that's fine. Here's some free content as well. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the, I think that's the key. You, you allow the people who want to buy your stuff to buy it. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, they can still consume it. Right. Yeah. Don't, that's, that's the key, right? Don't there. present an unconsumable product for free. Don't do the, you know, don't do the old yes, bait and but switch. also, yes. And also don't present a, a product that's only consumable for a, through a, through a paywall. Right. Yeah. Because then it's like, well, you know, I, I want to be able to test it. I want to see if I like this. Common sense. Etiquette. Yeah. Etiquette of content creation. Content, contetiquet, if you will. Content, that's a state. That's the first state established in the United States. Contetiquet. That's Contetiquet. interesting. That's, that's interesting. where they wrote the Declaration of Independence. Is it? I'm a real history buff. That's a pretty deep joke because you'd have to follow me on Instagram for a long time to know. Oh, I, I do know what you're talking about now. I do know what you're talking about. Andrew does a what? bit. He does, uh, he does Instagram stories about fake history. Yeah. And he basically makes up facts about things. The trick is to not think before you speak. But just talk and keep talking. <laughs> oh, right. You don't plan it out. No, not at all. Dan's is also in chat. No way. Cool. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, Dan's is our friends too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> See what I did That's there? That's very true. Mike B was actually hanging out in here earlier. Um, and he was like, hey, man, so play uh, play some of Dan's music. I kind of want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And so I played I played Fuzz. Yeah. You're, you're, it's a hit. You're a big fan. It's a hit. Um, and he was like. It's really good. Yeah. And he's like, he said it, he said it reminds him a lot of churches. Yep. And I think I also said that. Mm -hmm. Um, didn't I say that to you in the car? Yeah. You said churches and there was another one. I said it was churches. It was a cross between like churches and something else. What was the band? The sounds? There was a, it was an older band. A friend of mine drew a comparison. We're really big fans, Dan. I said it reminded me of like, it reminded me of a lot of the tracks on the drive soundtrack. Yes. And if you guys don't know, Dan's is, uh, uh, she's a uh, musician mm -hmm. and uh, she goes by the name of Computer Magic and you can find her on Spotify. Uh, you can find her on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So check out Computer Magic on, uh, so on all the places you can find music. Here's a great topic. Here's, here's let's get cracking into this. Okay. I'm when listening. Dan's was here with us in Florida, we were talking. Huge part of Dan's uh, interest is analog synths. Right? Oh, yes. Very much so. Right, very right. cool. So we get into talking about that. And she goes on to tell us about an artist that wrote an album for plants to listen to. <laughs> Mort Garson. Yeah, but who hasn't done that? You know what I mean? <laughs> right, exactly. That's kind of what you have to do before you can start playing for yeah, people. Yeah, my first album for plants came out when I was 19, I think. Okay, yeah, so that's about right. Yeah, it, it was about the right age. It felt, it felt, I felt compelled enough to do it at that, at that time, so I just... I yeah, just throw myself into it, you know? a lot of people thought that the Nirvana was not going to be a successful band because their album for Plants was not successful. Is and that they, true? Yeah, they thought that they weren't going to get a good shot. However, Mort Garson had a very successful Plant album called Plantasia, and Dan told us a whole story about it. And I think it was given away in certain department stores like Sears and whatnot. Given away? Yeah, like they would like it was like a you could get like vinyl, and now it's really rare. Do you not remember her telling us about this? I remember the telling me, but I don't remember the details. Like you said, giving giving away like for free. Yeah, like you'd buy like a mattress or something. You buy oh, like you a get plant, a free copy and of like, Plantasia. Dude, make sure to, yeah. That's so since then, I have listened to Plantasia <laughs> without Vlad, my house plant. Right. That um, seems kind of that's kind of that's kind of shitty. I think it's good. Why don't you listen to... Oh, because you're not home. Because I'm not home. I can't wait to get home. Andrew and lives in LA and he's currently visiting uh, visiting home because he broke his his femur. Yep. Not to be so. confused with his humorous, which is much funnier. I oh. didn't respond there. I don't blame you. That's okay. a low-hanging... That's that's a that's a dingleberry of a, a, dingleberry of a bone joke of it, right yeah. there. This isn't just a bone joke and poop podcast, Frank. Anyway, I think that that's I interesting. I think we have yet to prove that. No, I know. We really <laughs> I have. I think we have. That's not going all far so far. So my goal is to play Plantasia for Vlad, my house plant. And I, I'd like, I, I set this goal for the beginning of this year, or I'm sorry, in this year I wanted it to happen, but then I didn't repot him. And I think that that's an important part of a plant's growth is you need to make sure that they have the adequate sized pot. Um, so they can grow larger. So I'm going to repot him. It's like a goldfish him. or a turtle. Actually, they yeah. grow as big as their. That's right. As their their receptacle allows. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know if that's the correct term, but I think so. So I'm going to repot him. I'm going to soil him, 
And then I'm going to play Plantasia every day. We're going to listen to it. I compliment him every day already. When you say you're going to soil him, it sounds like you're going to, it sounds like you're literally going to shit on him. Well, this isn't a podcast about poop, so that would be so, impossible. That's true. I would never think that then. That exactly. makes no sense. Uh, that's yeah. completely off topic for us. So we'll have to check back in a year, set a reminder, one year. A year? Yeah. And he's going to grow through the roof of my, of my apartment. Why a year? That seems arbitrary. I don't know how long, how it takes for plants well, to grow. Well, it's like three months. That would be sick. I've beat the goal. Why don't you just keep us updated regularly instead of waiting a whole year? Have you seen a plant grow? <laughs> Do you really want that update? Is it a quick process? It sounds, sounds pretty quick, right? They grow like a leaf a month. A leaf a month? Maybe. Well, it's not like one leaf. They just do their... Do When you have a baby, do the babies grow fingers over time or do they have all, all, all do them all at once? They start with them, but they're very little. And then Would it be cooler if, if when you were a baby and you were born, you only had like one finger and then every like few months you'd grow another finger until you had Holy all of them? Holy shit. That would be so freaky, but I would like It's that. like teeth, right? Because you don't have all your teeth. You, you like have teeth that come in slowly. So like what if... You're a baby and you're like, oh, I don't have my 10th finger. I don't have my pinky finger yet. So I can't really, I'm not as, I'm not as, you know, opposable, it, graspable. It, it would also I'm... be great as like the, the spectator, the friend that, that is having friends have children now. And it's hard to keep up with their ages. Cause like babies look pretty similar for the first, at least for me. Not yeah. Being if you have a two month old baby or an eight month old baby, I have no idea. I can't tell. So it'd be like, how many fingers does it have? And they're like, oh, it's up to five. I'd be like, tie it. You could, you could, you could eight. It's like rings of a tree. Exactly. You could age the baby based on their fingers. It'd be mm-hmm. like, so here's the, here's a sub question. Go on. Do the toes come in proportional to the fingers? Like you have one finger, one toe, or are they completely separate? Like you'd have five toes and only two fingers. Thinking logically, Mm -hmm. the toes come later because it takes a baby longer to walk than it does to start grabbing things. Should it be that way or should it be the other way? Should you start walking first? I mean, coulda, shoulda, woulda. I guess that's true. They start grabbing first. Nature don't care about your shoulda and woulda. But I would like the... Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea of that because then it would be another thing to be like, oh, uh, my baby got all of its fingers. He's on his first toe. Can you imagine if you you had those braggy moms who were like... Oh, little little Jimmy only has six fingers. Billy's fingers came in like two months ago. <laughs> and you'd be like, bitch, shut up about your baby's fingers. Nobody cares. It wasn't cares. until you said that sentence that I was like, it just struck me all at once. I was like, this is a fucking weird thing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but also like schooling, you're like, how, how quickly did his fingers develop? Like it becomes like this, uh, this barometer of like your, of like your, how quickly you develop. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so instead of like, IQ tests and things and like like puzzles and stuff to, to figure out where you placed are like and what age did you say Brian had all of his fingers? Six. Okay. Well we look for about four to five. Four to five is really where we want to be in terms of finger development but, but it's fucked up because like we're saying this is a joke but really like all of the other developmental That things, would literally happen. No, that, yeah. that's a joke but that's <laughs> literally how it would be. You'd have you take your kid to the hospital if he's like five and, and his ninth finger hasn't come in. You'd be like, I don't. Oh, my my friend Susan, like, oh, she maybe has all her fingers. I don't understand. Dude. I just I'm just worried. I just want to make sure he's healthy. I want to make sure all his fingers are coming in. What if I just went down another really weird route of like, what if we never stopped growing fingers as we got older? <laughs> you'd have to like get them cut off like hairs. Uh, like you'd have to get a finger cut. No, instead like, of a hair what cut? if it was like mad convenient? Like there was a way where it was like just, just like snap off. Like okay, you know the little hands, the little I find them so funny that you put. A whole hand on one finger stop you don't have them do you have them they're so <laughs> this nothing funnier to me than those tiny little hands <laughs> here have some <laughs> could you lend me a hand you can have two if you want so for anybody listening that's hands. not on the stream they make these fingers or these hands that go on fingers uh and it's a whole hand per finger. And I don't think there's anything funnier in in the world. I've actually mailed a friend of mine a whole pack of them without any context. Because I think they're so Jeremy, funny. right? Yeah. Of course. So what if... <laughs> Your fingers grew their own fingers. Yeah, so it kept going like this. And it was just a tree. And by the end of it, you were so nimble and you could do so many things. I think if that were... was I think if that was the case, if that was the the natural course of human evolution, like we would have to reevaluate our definitions of attraction because that is fucking hideous. Correct. And I would want to set every person I met on fire. Man, my future wife. Just Look at, like dude, mad. that's so unsettling. It's not. Because I'm it's picturing them as real hands. Except no, that's me as who I dude. am. <laughs> Except me and my fingers. Oh God, it's so cringy, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. because you could feel all 25 fingers, like, 
across your oh god i can't yeah, I i'm just only can't. 28 think about me in 10 years <laughs> <laughs> and i'm so young you see oh. see and it would just continue it would just be branches and we'd just have an order would it be there. a common practice for people to get their fingers removed or would they just would this be like because eventually that becomes our fingers are who are what make us who we are eventually it becomes unsustainable right you would just have too much too much length and too much weight <laughs> <laughs> just be like the bone structure alone would just be so so splintered and then we would evolve is how that really should, an evolutionary trait that you want to have how long should we talk about one subject how long do you until, think anybody, i think it's until we're i think it's until we've cashed it do you think anybody like driving to work right now is like holy shit no th what they're thinking is like wow that's brilliant i'm surprised natural the natural evolution of things hasn't taken that route that's true actually what if it did that what if you just like I don't know. It would get pretty impractical. If you guys can't see it, I mean, if you guys are just listening, like he's putting one of the hands on top of the other hands on top. He has like, he's going three hands <laughs> deep on each, on each finger. Yo, somebody asked a question in the chat that was fucked up. You clip your fingers like you clip fingernails. Oh my God. But I you have like that. a pile of nails, I of fingers. That. And then if you put them in soil, they grow. And that's how you get these. <laughs> but you don't need those in this, in this hypothetical situation, I man. <laughs> I just thought about a tree. What if this was just a tree? Um, coasters. I wanted to talk about coasters as well. I've had, I have such a huge passion feeling about coasters. What we both do. And honestly, that might be what started one of the points of us talking about this podcast was when we realized we spent like 20 minutes. And I'm like, wow, coasters. coasters. That's amazing. If you guys hear a thank you in the, uh, in the audio portion, like a, it's, um, uh, it's from key it's a key and peel skit if you hear that thank you it's it's people on twitch uh dot com twitch.tv slash frank worth <laughs> it's, it's it? people subscribing through twitch and it's it's my automatic thank you message so if you guys happen to hear that and you're just listening to it that's what that is i don't want you guys going to the comments and be like god i keep hearing this thank you and i have no idea what it is i thought yeah, i was going crazy somebody needs to chill on thanking them um i didn't realize that that was a subscriber yeah Whenever someone resubscribes or subscribes, it'll be like, thank you. Oh my God. Okay. You need, I need to uh, check me out. Check me out before I put them away. This is crazy because this is like devil horns, like punk rock. Hey, this is crazy. But look, it's also putting your hands up. Look at my fingers. So it's like at a concert, let me see your hands. Like you're putting baby. your hands up, but then you're also throwing up the horns. We're going to move on now. All right. This is that's time. That's when we move on. <laughs> that's when. That's when we stop. Oh God. Um, coasters. Coasters. Yes, I'm listening. Right. So, uh, first off, when did life get this boring? So there's a pro there's a point where you become an adult, right? And there's all there's all kinds of memes about it. You can see them everywhere, right? And the memes are basically like. Man, being an adult is going to bed at 8 p.m. and hoping your can your plans get canceled and all that shit, right? And like, you know, getting excited about a new dishwasher. You're like, oh, oh. Every, they installed a new dishwasher. Can't wait to use it. And I felt this in my soul. Yeah. I feel it, dude. You know, but um, I have I have I have a I have a desk. It's made of wood. All my furniture is made of wood. Once you start buying your own stuff, yes. When I lived at my parents' house, and it would be their furniture. Yeah, I didn't care as much. Yeah, and not because I'm like a dick. I didn't know to care as much, you know, like, I don't know how wood works. I don't know how things are expensive. I don't know how, why I should use a coaster. Right. I don't know if they care if I use like, there's like so many levels that like you have to sort through as a child, right. Or even someone in your teenage years. Yeah. You're not an adult enough to know that like, I'm a fuck at my parents' furniture. They no. spend a lot of money on it. They don't respect wood. I should have a color. Yeah. Right. And if you guys are Curb Your Enthusiasm fans, you know, you should know that Andrew and I respect wood. We absolutely do. And so like, I'm a big proponent of having nice coasters. Yes. Like, which I love. As a guest at your house, when I set my Because I feel like it removes nice coaster, your risk. Yes. Right? It makes... You're not like, oh, God, I hope this doesn't sink through. And, like, if I have a shitty coaster and you put your drink on it and your the condensation still goes through, it's still kind of on you, even it's though it's on me. It's me. Right, no, exactly. It is. it is. I feel self-conscious. And you're like, well, I should have been more vigilant, I guess. Yeah, sorry my drink condensated too much. Because it's my drink and I put it on the coaster. Onto but you really, it's work. my fault as your host because I supplied you with an insufficient absorption device. It's like reassuring me that the name is Zordon before yeah. knowing. Even though I, I took that for you. Yes. I was like, I'll take the risk here. Right. I will assume this risk for you. So here we are now really liking coasters. And so the reason, another point of this was I was here at your house and I got really boonswaddled with a coaster 
And again, boon swaddled. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. Like it, 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 uh, it duped me. I, that's messed up. I got got. That's messed up. The condensation stuck to the bottom of the nice coaster. Oh, yes. Lifted in the air. Yes. I go to take a drink. It falls and breaks. The coaster was still attached to the bottom of the cup. I felt terrible. And it fell on the ground, the tile floor, and it cracked. And it was that was the nice end of that coaster. coaster. But then that led to you researching and finding more coasters. So yeah. now in your home, there's these nice wooden ones. It looks like it's... No, a, these are these are sandstone. What in the world is a sandstone? Sandstone is a material. It's a very porous mineral, right? And so it absorbs the liquid very well. And then the bottom is cork. So This is one of the ones I broke. No, no, no. It just looks like it. Oh. Yeah, see? Because okay. the other ones, like you said, the other ones were nice too. This is very nice. But And then you have the little vinyl record ones in the living room, which are uh, kitschy. Yes. You know, they... So here's the funny story about that. Yeah. One of my, one of my Twitch subscribers, his name is Kerwit. A uh, good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He actually, whenever we talk about something goofy on the stream, he will literally just buy it on Amazon and mail it to me. Incredible. So I talked about coasters. Is that how you have the tiny hands? No, I bought those myself. Oh. But he, we talked about coasters. He bought these glasses, these these ridiculous glasses that we use on stream a lot. Oh, sure. And uh, we were talking about coasters. Shouts to Kerwit. And uh, he's like, hey, I just sent you some coasters. And then after that, he heard about my diatribe about coasters, about how, like, I want a coaster that absorbs the liquid mm -hmm. so that, A, the coaster doesn't stick to the bottom. Yep. And, B, when I lift the cup, there's not just, like, a pool of water surrounding the I coaster. Because I'm like, that's that's your only job. It's – and who, in, who manufactures such a thing? Like, it's like you're just making a flat cup. That's all you're doing if you're, like, literally just letting the water pool on your coaster. And so after he heard me talk about this, he's like – Turns out, I don't think the coasters I ordered you are going to be what you want, but oh, no. they're still kind of cool. No, that's the, the vinyl ones. Oh, they are pretty cool. Right? And they're just plastic. They're plastic coasters mm -hmm. with little, like, vinyl. Like, they look like vinyl records, they right? Like but they're plastic. Vinyl records, yeah. So there's literally no absorbative properties in them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so, just a, a vessel to disperse water uh, a, 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 10 minutes after. It will contain it the normal. water that drips off your cup. And it will sit there until you absorb it with like a paper towel or something, basically. Yes, or until there's too much condensation, and then it overflows, it overflow correct, and onto the table, which you're trying to, to keep dry landmark. to begin with. Yeah, it'll make more of like a, a molten, bubbly, not singular ring mark. Um, somebody in the chat a little while ago, as we started talking about coasters, said something that I loved about growing up and being an adult. And I'm curious if you have this. I'm listening. They said you have a favorite burner on the stove. I I, I do. I can relate to that front, on a spiritual It's the front level. large one. Yes. There's dude. a large. And when I look at the small one, sometimes the small burner, I'm like, why are you even here? I think that the small one is nice for special occasions or certain things, right? Like, <laughs> It's I, my birthday. Going to use my oh, small no, burner. It's my birthday. I'm, you better believe I'm using the big burner. Yeah, that's right, but, like, buddy. What if you're trying to like simmer some sauce? Like, it's it. I, I like to... Here's a question. To, You're to not go wrong. I just wanted to shame. I don't want to size shame the burner. That's all I really wanted to do. I understand that. Do You're not you, wrong. and this is on the same thought process, do you find great joy in finding the exact right size plate for your meal? No. Oh. No, and I'm not saying you're okay. wrong to do so. I'm just saying that, like, I have so few plate options. I only have, like, two or three sizes of plates, right? Well, that's me. But so, like, it feels like it's almost too easy to find the exact plate. Like, if I'm having a, me a bigger meal, I'll have the big plate. If it's just a tiny scoop of something, I'll have a smaller plate, you know? Like, it's not a big enough challenge for me to find that much much reward in it. You know what mm. I'm saying? Okay, so I, I do get you. But, like, the perfect example is when I completely so feel like phoning it in and not like just my bullshit I need food is a microwave bean and cheese burrito right. I love them yeah because they're good yeah you know you know why I would err on the side of bean and cheese I don't enjoy or trust the, the quality of yes. meat in those in those foods if, it, like, I, you can't you can't fuck up beans but the quality of meat can be so subpar and like chewy and like yes bleh. own the shittiness if you're gonna have a shitty meal like let it be ingredients that are okay to be shitty correct that's 100 percent. that's a great way of putting it that's yeah i can eat shitty beans taste just as good as regular canned beans or like the best level of bean you can get from the supermarket that's gonna taste the same as beans in a frozen burrito i'm neutral to beans so my bean and cheese burritos i have found though they would not look it in the packaging once microwaved fit perfectly on the small plate. I find great joy in eating the burrito off of the small plate 
over the large plate. I feel like I have wasted unnecessary surface on the large plate. When well, that large plate that. and I load them into the dishwasher. So it's the same. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's going in the same yeah, it's going in there other way. It's taking it's, up the same. The dishwasher's it's using the same, the same amount of water. Right. It's not like it takes more water. Like it's there. They're hanging out. They're existing. Yeah. Once it's in the dishwasher, it's the same. I feel like I am conserving and I feel like I am doing a better job when I use the adequate size plate for the adequate size meal. And I think about it. Is it a visual component? Like you can look at it and be like, that's more aesthetically pleasing because there's not a lot of negative space. I think it's both. Okay. Yeah. Because it's that. I do love that. But I also like, I feel like I'm making less of a footprint on the world. I use a lot of paper plates and I feel bad about it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't use a lot of paper plates, but I can't shame you in that at all. Because I'm honestly a really big straw guy. This whole straw movement. Every I'm, time they give me a straw at a restaurant, I just I just leave it. I'm like, I don't even need this. Dude, I that is where we differ. I'm such a straw guy. And when I get a paper straw. I love it. I want to burn the whole place no, down. No, dude. I'm I like, can, yes, more of this. Dude, because by halfway through the drink, it is flimsy. And it, it has, it's collapsed into yeah, itself. Yeah, and that's what it's going to do to the environment. It's just collapse and disintegrate. But it, it, it's not even making it to the end of the drink. It's, so it's, you use another one, man. Good it's deal. too eco-friendly for its own good. I... I and I know like, I also use way too many paper towels. Someone said I use way too many paper towels. I am that way too. Yeah, that's don't we all? It's my it's default because I don't like using. So there's a towel on my dish rack, right? Um, or on my on my you know the stove. The stove has on the stove handle. Absolutely, you keep a towel. <laughs> Can you even get a stove? <laughs> I think without they come it? with it, yeah. right? They're like, here's your towel yeah. for your stove. But here's the thing: after I wash my hands with this towel so many times, I feel like it's dirty now. And now I'm just washing my hands or drying my hands with a dirty towel. Oh, dude. Right? So, like, so, the yes. thing I like about paper towels, which I consistently use, is, like, everyone is clean. I'm starting at a zero. I'm starting at the lowest baseline for these paper towels. I'm like, yes. oh, cool. This one's going to be 100% clean. And I get to wash my hands with it. So I know I'm washing my hands with something clean. Yep. Rather, if, like, I take the towel off the... Mm -hmm the stove i clean off the top it's got like crumbs and food and dirt oh, yeah. i can't dry my hands with that no. now because i'm just gonna rub that on my hands no and i dude actually that's a i get so anxious with the, the stove towel because I, what i've done actually is i have a dark and a light stove towel and i thought that this would remedy it but it doesn't granted i do live with other people i do not live alone so i in my head logically light towel is hands towel because it, it, it would show more dirt correct you'd be able so, to determine yeah right up front yeah whether this towel was usable for your hands and it says hey leave me clean so you can keep drying right. your hands and then the dark towel says hey i'm here for crumbs I feel like i'm this here is not for gonna go the way spills and it just inevitably somebody else uses a towel you're in a pinch you're in a hurry you wipe something up with the light towel. Yeah. So you here's go the, to dry your hands yeah. off, and it smells like old cheese. And situations, it's on your hands for so long. In situations you need a towel, mm -hmm. those are not situations where you have time to be choosy about which towel you need. That's exactly it. And it's a just, towel is as a is an item is a is an object that is also is is often used out of necessity. It's a flawed system. The the dish the the, the stove towel. It, it, it's always going to get used at the worst time and you cannot rely on it. I don't think it's hand for hands. Towel. I don't think it's, it's not, for drawing. It's not. So I do get the paper towels there. I yeah. really do. Another part. My, my thing about the paper towels is that I don't really mind using them because paper is naturally biodegradable, right? Like, I so know. Whether it's in a landfill or whether it's being recycled, like it's still going to degrade and not yeah. really leave a huge footprint. I, would I mean, imagine. I guess like uh, you'd be cutting down a lot of trees, right? Like if we're using too much, sure, you'd be cutting yeah. down extra trees, but yes, it would be biodegradable. Right. So yeah, your, your, your cause, your footprint is on the, on the beginning, not on the end. Correct. When it comes to, uh, which with those fucking paper straws, they're cutting down trees for those too. So what are we doing? Killing trees or fish? Choose your, pick your poison. But <laughs> that's so wrong. But what I, what else I was going to say is talking about hand smell. That is another big thing for me is if there's a, a, a smell, a non ideal smell on my hands, like nice hand soap, love it. But we were at a barbecue restaurant. Today. You and I. I think so. Yeah. I think it was Sonny's. I was betrayed by a wet nap. Was it, you know Sonny's little... or it, wasn't, it wasn't mission barbecue, right? No mission would never do that to us. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You know the wet naps? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I love them. Right. There was one, maybe it was... Sunny's, Sunny's usually typically has a lemon-scented wet nap. That's it. Okay. Dude, we're on it. Lemon-scented wet nap can smell like dishwater. And I did it, and then I couldn't... Like, I had to go wash my hands, because I'm like, my hands smell like dishwater now. I was that's betrayed. A, that's a you thing, though. Is it? I think lemon-scented things are, are generally clean. Like, it smelled like mildewy, though. Maybe that's in my head. 
Obviously, this is a company. They are in business supplying wet naps to several restaurants. Have you had your brain scan, like a CAT scan of your brain done? Because you might just have a tumor of some sort. I, actually, they didn't. When they did my leg, they, they scanned the, the hip and the leg, but they didn't. Should have just went all the way, full body. What was your bill, like 90000 So you just got to just yeah. chalk it up to 120 and just an even 120 and then Question. you get your brain scanned. Actually, you're right. Good call. Mm -hmm. But I think I broke a toe skateboarding before my leg. And toes are like, you just... Just let, let it be. Chill. It'll it'll bend back. So I need to do one more follow up X ray. Do you? What's etiquette there? Do you think that I could like talk nicely to the X ray tech and be like, "Yo, while well, you're using that big crazy since machine, I'm already in the, since I'm already in the tube anyway, trying to give this toe. <laughs> it's on the same leg. You're trying to take a look. Just give the toe a quick scan. I'm not even asking for your medical advice on what to do once we scan it. I just I just want like, I just want to know. Like to see. Should I should I look further into it? I can WebMD from there. Just give me the toe scan for free. And doctor's visits are expensive, and you're there, and you've gone through all of it, and it's one more. Can I switch? It's weird because it? it's it's such a thing where like, where it comes down. A lot of it comes down to like the bureaucracy of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like that guy might not have permission to do it, even right. though it's so easy. And like maybe you know, I don't even know how how, how like what is it? were you like an MRI? I, I I had to do both. So it started as a regular X ray. And then they're like, oh, you know, got to make sure we do it right. Surgery and metal. Like, Dan said, I'll take lime scented. Lime scented is good. Do they make lime scented? I don't think so. I wish they did. I but I don't, it. that doesn't sound like it would be any kind of dis 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 detergent scent to me. It smells, it seems nice. But, um, fresh. So, like, the thing about MRIs, right? Like, is that I don't know if they're charged by, like, the time it takes, right? Like, maybe it's $400 every 10 minutes, right? So, if it takes you an extra 20 minutes to scan a toe, right? Or, like, to print that out or, you know, whatever, then, yeah. like, I don't know if it's costing the hospital. I don't know if it's costing you. Like, I don't know what, what, I don't know what the charges are based on. Right. Well, okay. So in my head, here's how it works. And this is completely uneducated. I'm just assuming, but I think that they, it has to be digital these days, right? 2019. Well, like, it's not going to be analog, right? Like it's. Well, right. Because like there was, there is x-ray film, but I don't know. I think that it could take an x-ray and then show it on a monitor digitally right away. If that's the case and you're not printing it out and you're not taking it to an x-ray tech, let me pop behind the little booth. Just be like, yo, while you're at it, get, let's get a quick little picture of this blown out toe. I'm going to hop around the little booth. We don't tell the doctor. We don't tell the x-ray tech. I'm just going to come take a gander. I'm going to take a photo with my cell phone, and I'm going to think about it for too many hours later. But if you can't interpret the results of an x-ray, like, is it even good for you? But I can because I'll be like, this is what a toe looks like. There's fucking 10 others to compare to. Well, I like how – I like how uh, – how – thoroughly you're breaking down what an x like what how how like all the people go to school for years to mm -hmm. like interpret bones and x-rays and healing and all that kind of stuff but and you're like yeah i could just matter. take it i could just take it if they don't matter then what are you getting this x-ray for man i'm curious it oh hurts still it still hurts it still i just want to know yeah how long ago was this it was like two months ago oh that's recent then yeah i thought this was like when you were a child like hey when i was like 15 years old i ended up breaking a toe no it and was recent uh, Oh, I Maybe I could roll it into the same injury. Be like, oh, oh you know, like I had oh, this why recent that? injury. You should, have. you should have been like, yeah, it was part of my, f you I know, broke my femur and then this one individual toe. I, I didn't say anything because the femur hurts so bad. I couldn't even feel it at the time, but now it feels it. weird. Yeah, it might probably could the same legs. So. I mean, by, by roll that in, I don't think they're giving anything free. They'll just put it on the same bill. They're going to listen to friends and be like, we heard you. We know bud. you're a scam. This yeah, is you, from a previous yeah, you skateboarding yeah, you injury. You missed a kickflip. Yeah, you just publicized uh, your desire to to commit fraud against the medical, uh, against the health insurance industry. So Sick. Uh, probably don't do that. Yeah. Um, I'll be candid about it. What? I'll say, hey, <laughs> been thinking about this a lot. You should be like, hey, you listen to podcasts? <laughs> no? Listen, here's, what, here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your favorite podcast? I don't really listen to them. I don't know how to get them. Sounds great. Perfect. Think I hurt my toe <laughs> Sounds uh, good. the same time. That's great. Fantastic. Yeah. That's uh, that's my thoughts on x-rays. So, And it doesn't matter because I'm off this leg for another six weeks. So it's going to heal. It's going to be fine. I just want to know. I'm just curious. Is it though? Will it heal on its own? Yes. That's what bones do. They just fucking heal. Then why do you need casts and splints and things? When they matter. How do you know this isn't a time where it matters? It's a toe. 
I don't think that's a. I don't think that's how that works. What happens if it doesn't bend? You still walk. What am I gonna grab spoons off the ground with it? You know, like what? Do you, that's the only thing. No, I think you're not having, going to. Which well, is that's what I'm saying. That's what you're missing out on, though. Having limited mobility and toes, in my opinion, doesn't matter. If if you had to choose, if you had to say, Andrew, choose one uh, flaw with your mobility and your bones, I'd be like, I don't know, man. Make my toes not bend as well. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. I think you say that, but if all 10 of your toes didn't bend as well, I think you would probably hate that. You would I probably develop wrong. back problems. And if somebody's listening and they're like, dude, this is not something to joke about. They're like, as a medical professional, yeah. or you need your toes to bend as correctly. A, as, a, as a victim of uh, blown out toes, somebody could be like, dude, you don't understand. I live with this every day and it's terrible. So I'm not educated. Can we take a moment of silence for the people with the blown out toes? Sure. Right. We thank you all for doing that. Thank you for your that. service, your blown out toe service. <laughs> Larry David not thanking the dude for his service. Oh my God. That's Kirby great. Enthusiasm is the best. And I think it's pretty obvious that we'd be fans considering this is basically a podcast about nothing. Yeah, we're huge fans. I'm a huge Larry David fan. What if he listened to this one day? Oh my God. It is a podcast about nothing. If I see him in Los Angeles, I will be happy. I will not fan out. I will not say anything. I will you not should, acknowledge you should it. Put, you should put episodes of Friends on a demo cassette tape oh and be like, hey, my I got my, de- my, got my demo tape for you. You've been a huge inspiration to us. Here's a demo <laughs> Can you listen tape. to my demo? It's just burnt CDs of the podcast, <laughs> and I give him the whole podcast. Yeah, that's good. It would mean so much if you listened to Mr. David. He would never, but you know, it would be nice to do Here's it. an hour-long thing where you get please, mentioned yes. for a minute. Here, please listen to my hour-long podcast I and multiple episodes of that. I time where we mentioned you. And he'll be like, eh, not, not really for me. Thank you, though. I'm the type of person to take a joke too far. I might burn this episode on a CD in case. So I see here's him. the thing: you, even if you took a joke too far, yeah, Larry David wouldn't let you get to get that far at all. Is the thing? No, he he yeah he's like he's he's like notorious for a guy that like just doesn't have the time for it. No, yeah, I'd be like I'm a huge best. fan and I take jokes too far and we talk about like, you in a okay, podcast okay. and I burnt it on a CD and he'd be like that's funny. I'm not gonna take I, the CD. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I don't really. It's not for me. Thank yeah, you. Like, that's you. funny. That's a good joke. Yeah. That would. That yeah. Would and he would just walk away, and he would put his hands up like this, and he would walk backwards away from you, and then he would just leave. God. And then he would tell a story about you on the next season of Curb, and you'd be like, "This guy, this fucking guy, he tried to give me like a CD. Well, I don't care. I'm not. I don't have time to listen to this." But then that we would have made it. Maybe that's true. I'm burning the CD. Oh God, it's so meta. It is meta. Ooh. That's um, we know that we could, there is a we could story. Be like, Yo. We could be on the Kirby Enthusiasm Reddit page and they'll be like, wait, that, that was us, guys. That was us. That would be bucket list. We're going to say, we know we know there's a story. We know there's a story coming for this episode. And we know what it's about. <laughs> oh my God, dude. And we know that I haven't oh been able to hear it God. because we knew that this episode was you, coming dude. up. So and this I is would. amazing. Like, this is a story I was saving for the podcast. And as it happened, uh, the person I was with was like, well, I guess you got your topic for next week's friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. So this past weekend, I uh, was visiting the girlfriend. Love it. And I was leaving on Sunday night, mm-hmm. Monday morning. And we talked about this last week, about how like when you travel, when I travel specifically, <laughs> I, can't, I can't shit. Yeah, you go I into can't camel poop. Mode. Everybody knows that. I, yes. And so I told this to Mike, and Mike was like, oh, that's a weird problem to have. And I'm like, no, this happens a lot. No. Your body, like, I don't know what it is. I wish, I'm going to have to look it up because I know this is a real thing. Like, I know this is a real, like, it's it's something that happens with your gastrointestinal tract where you're just like, I'm not going to have to poop for a few days, right? If you were me and thought the same way I did, instead of looking it up, you would convince yourself <laughs> that you're medically right. And you'd leave it there. You'd say toes don't matter. And then you'd just let it ride. What do you mean by let it ride? Define that. Just let her go, bud. Just What do you mean let her go, though? <laughs> let it hang out in the ether of being self-assured for no reason. What is the it being? What are you? What are you? Your s- assumption. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't oh. know what your verb in, your, your, na- oh, your noun I in the sentence too was. too far. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just assume. Don't look it up. But just, I don't have any assumptions, really. I just want to medically know what is actually going on. No, just take what you're thinking. Assume something. <laughs> I don't want to. And though. say that I that's like the what certainty of it. Is. Yeah. Okay. Your so your gastrointestine goes into travel mode, the same way your car can go into service diagnostic mode when you go to the dealership. 
your 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 intestines know and they go into travel mode as us doctors understand continue i like what you're saying <laughs> and i'm behind it but the thing is like no the thing <laughs> is no <laughs> It's like if you put your phone on airplane mode, your body goes into airplane mode too, and it just doesn't come. There's no button you can press to de-airplane mode <laughs> yourself it. while you're traveling. That's all. That's what it does. So I, I got there Thursday. Mm -hmm. They're Friday. Yep. They're Saturday. Yep. Sunday night, mm. like three days into it, I'm like, I'm really feeling some, some, some gastric distress here. Yeah. Mm. So I go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's it's like a Chipotle burrito. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? It's not like after you eat a Chipotle burrito. No, it's the size of a Chipotle the burrito. Entity. It's like three days of, sure. of of consumption, you know? like Sure. And as us medical professionals know, your intestines only hold for three days. It's the first three days of travel. That's what scientific studies have shown. See, no, like, stop. You need to stop. Because <laughs> like, in my head, I'm like, oh, wow, is that true? Did he look See? it up? And then I'm like, no, no, this is Andrew. He made that up. And then he's going to sell himself. you on it. And then you're never going to look it up because you're just going to believe him mm -hmm. in the moment. Mind over matter. So, yes, of course, you've reached your three-day travel limit and you've been on to day four. And I'm like, well, here we go. I guess we're going to have to empty the warrens here. And so I flush the toilet. Where are you? Are you in an airport? I'm in her bathroom. A... Oh, and uh, it's a two-story house in Denver, and I'm in the bottom floor. Um, her living area is, like, in the bottom floor. She has a roommate. Mm. So I go to the bathroom, flush it. Mm. No good. No bueno. We're in uh, we're in bad shape. The worst thing happened. It's the it's life. It's life. All it's This is, like, if you have nightmare scenarios yep. about, like, mm -hmm. when you're with someone. Yep. And uh, the, the, the thing you want to least happen ever yep. in a pub in any public space. It happened. Mostly at a friend's house. Like, if you're yes. in a public bathroom, yeah. you can get away unscathed. You can yeah. get out of there and be like, hey, man, I don't know. Toilet's not working. Some Whatever. psycho clogged Someone up. Will... <laughs> Better call the janitor in this boy. So, so, like, yes, the dumb and dumber scene is literally perfect, right? <laughs> so, so I'm in there, mm. and I got the fan on, right? Yeah. So, like, I'm plunging. <laughs> and I'm trying to remedy the situation. Very important question. Yeah. Has it gone over the brim? No, 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 no. We're not there Thank yet. No, 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 no. Goodness. We're not there yet. Okay. So I'm plunging. Yes. I flush again. Nothing. Gets a little higher. I wait for the water to go down. I plunge again. Smart man. I get a text. Stop. It says, hey. And I'm like. No. I'm like, hey, I think your toilet's mad at me. And uh, like nervous sweaty emoji, right? Sure. And she's like, I think it is. I think you're right. So I go out there uh -huh. and um, she could hear the whole thing. She was <laughs> laughing to herself the entire time. It was unbelievable to me. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop laughing at this time either because I was good, so good. You've taken. You've, right. I was so nervous and worried about this awkward situation. It all happened. But she was like, I heard it happening. I heard you get quiet and like wait for the water to go down. And I heard you start again. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm trying to like run through all the things I was doing and like saying and like and I'm like, wow, you can hear all that. But like. It wasn't weird. It wasn't awkward. She heard the whole thing mm -hmm. and, and la was laughing about it with me. And I was like, oh my God, this was so awkward because like, it's the most awkward moment you could ever have um, with like a, a human being that you're intimate with. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. especially when you're not like, you haven't had the ex th that many experiences for this to be like just a normal thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So still didn't go down nonetheless, but I was like, I'll give it some time. I'll let the water go down. We'll try again. No big deal. So it's like 11, 12. She goes to bed. I'm like, you go to bed. I'll go, to f I'll go fix this, right? So I go to the bathroom. Try again. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, this is unbelievable. I don't know what's going on. Like, I feel like I'm in, I feel like I'm in a fucking, like, I'm, I feel like I'm in a fucking TV show. And, like, someone's, Ashton Kutcher's going to come around the corner and be like, gotcha. Uh -huh. Never and I'm flushing like, turn. <laughs> yeah, Got like, him. I'm like, this is a prank. Did someone put some plastic down here? <laughs> and so I look on Google and I'm like, <laughs> how to unclog a toilet. Like the birthday candles that turn back on. And I want to be honest, man. I've unclogged a lot of toilets in my day. Sure. But when unclogging with a plunger doesn't work. What do you do? 
That's what I'm saying. I'm like, is there a next step? Yeah. If you got, if I'm a, pl- I'm a professional plumber. Yeah. What do I do? I actually don't know here, which is crazy. There's a lot of things, but apparently you need tools for it. Like you need an auger. One like an auger is like a thing you can stick down the drain. And like the snake. Uncla- yes. That's oh. or they're like pour warm water and dish detergent down there because that'll break it up. Okay. Right. Um. There's all kinds of little tricks. They're like you should heat the plunger up with warm water We're because it'll provide value for the yeah, listener. It'll provide a better suction. Right. Yeah. And to be honest. In previous podcasts I've done, this is not something I would talk about, but I want to be more open and honest on a podcast like this. And I want to go into like more personal stuff and share stories with you about my life, you know, because I think that's cool. And I like all people and we all destroy toys. Correct. And I want to connect with you guys. So eventually it says, do you know the, you know, the part that the, the, the handle is connected to, it opens a little flap. Yes. Okay. So it's like, pull that up Mm -hmm. and let, let about a cup of water enter and just make sure it doesn't go down. Right. Because that's your way of like seeing if the water will go down. Mm-hmm. So I do that. Water's running. It's not going down. Um, there's also a device to the left of that that sprays water out to like refill the back of the bowl. Absolutely. It looks like okay. a little sprinkler. That's correct. It looks mm-hmm. exactly like a sprinkler. Um, little do you know, hmm. there's a device on top of that that holds it down to make sure it... Oh, it, no. It, 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 uh, it regulates the amount of water that comes out. Oh, no. I didn't realize it at the time. That part popped off while the top of the toilet bowl was off. The water wouldn't stop running. Oh, no. I panicked. I started screaming for her. Water was flowing out of the toilet bowl. It finally happened. (laughs) That's the worst. Andrew, I can't even express to you, dude. This moment was the most terrifying moment I can think of in the last 20 years of my life. The bathroom floor. She's going to break up with you. Like half, half an inch of water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's leaking into the, like the living area. Oh no. There's no carpet. It's just tiled, but nonetheless. And I'm so panicked. I don't even think to turn the water off. Oh, it doesn't even cross oh, my yeah. mind because I'm trying to fix it within the toilet itself. The master valve. Yes. Which is right there. It's right in front of, of me the course. whole time. But I'm so freaked out. I'm like, oh, oh I'm going to pull that thing. I'm going to make sure the flop is closed. And I'm going to just go, how the water, how, how do you make the water stop? How do you make the, the bowl was over here. I'm going to try to make it, try to lift it, make yeah. sure the water, nothing, nothing is stopping the water. You're because calling the, the fire department at this the, point. Because the sprinkler, mm. the thing we referred to as the sprinkler is still shooting water. And I'm it's like, what's going. the key? What's the mechanical component here that will sh- make that stop? Because mm. that stops naturally on its own. Mm. But what's the, what's the thing that trips that? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. So I leave and I'm like, hey, hey, you have to wake up. Uh, uh, I'm fucking up your house. Like, oh, no. Oh, I'm no. Never, we're, you know, we're breaking up and you're never going to have me back. But for right now, we have to figure out how to fix this. Yeah. And so eventually I get back in there. I turn up the water. Yeah. Right. But I mean, come on. We know what's going on. The toilet wasn't flushing completely. Yes. And that's the water that's been flowing Yes. Out, it's your so. poop water. Correct. Yeah. It's a miserable experience for everyone involved. Absolutely. It sucks. Can you even wash the towels that you use or do you, you can. throw them away? You definitely can. Because most of it, there was so much water that came out that it was all very, very diluted. It was you know diluted I mean? poop water. Washable, salvageable <laughs> it, it, towels. It is what it is. Absolutely. It is what it is. Oh, I, I have a story right after this to make you feel better. Oh, so, thank, thank, yeah. thank Christ. Yeah, it happens to everyone. So she immediately wakes up. She tries to calm me down. She gets every towel she can find. The entire time we're cleaning this mess up, She's laughing and joking. Loving it. Smile on her face the whole time. Yeah. It was unbelievable. You're falling in love more. I was losing my mind. I could feel my heart being out of my chest Absolutely. because I was like, I ruined your house. Whole house. Your bathroom is fucked. You yeah. have to go. You have to wake up and leave for work you in like four hours. You have to get a whole hours. new bathroom. Poop touched the floor. I Can I call your landlord and figure out how much your new bathroom is going to cost and just pay for that? The whole bathroom. Every towel in the house went. I, we, I put them in the washing machine when they when they were done. Put mm-hmm. them in the dryer. I was like, "Go, you go back." When it was all, we ended up cleaning up the whole living room. All the mm-hmm. towels absorbed all the water. Put those in the washing machine. Put those in the dryer when they were done. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, "You just go back to sleep. I'll take care of cleaning this up." We figured out what the problem was. The best part was that the the, the, the flooding wasn't necessarily my fault. The the piece on the toilet broke off completely unrelated to my to my okay. issue. Okay. Right. Like I clogged the toilet, but like. If it wasn't for this piece, it would just be a clogged toilet. That's no big deal. Right. Um, 
Eventually, she went in there and unclogged it. She worked on it for like 16 seconds, naturally unclogged it. And I was just like... She knows her house better than you. This is what she said. She's like, this is this totally clogs like if you look at it the wrong way. I wouldn't worry about it. And I was like, oh my God, I wish you told me this. Why? Because I'm thinking that I'm like the freak of nature that clogged right. this toilet. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I had a superhuman shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm a body freak of nature. three-day threshold. Correct. And you did. And that's what I said to myself. Shit. I'm like, listen, you can't feel bad. This is three days worth of... of excrement. Of excrement. That has been building. Yes. And if I didn't let it go, I'd be dead. That's right. I'd be septic. Yes. Um, so I'm like, you know, that's, the, you know, for three days, three days worth of shit, like this is, this is fine, right? Like yeah. that's a, it's going to be, it's going to be sizable. Let's be real. It's a three in one. But like when she's like, hey, this toilet clogs if you look at it the wrong way. I was like, oh my God. So you've experienced, this is amazing. Yeah. Because now I'm like, oh, it's just a normal, it's just a shit toilet. And like, it's one of those toilets with the holes like this and you're like. Never going down. Never. And for those in the audience, I'm making like a, I'm, I'm, I'm hyperbolically making the size of a quarter, a which quarter, is yeah. like, you know, a, cool. If you do generous, it would be the, the size of an, an aerosol can. Yeah, like the bottom of an aerosol can. Right. Yeah. That's good. I saw it. I knew. I was looking to see what you, what you glanced at there. So she unclosed it and it, everything was okay. And you fell more in love and the relationship is still thriving. So... Or is there more? No, no, no. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like, I, I, I was like, you go back to sleep. I'll clean all this up. Uh -huh. I, you know, she went back to bed. I, when the towels were, were done washing, I put them in the dryer. Uh, I found more towels and I ended up cleaning the, the bathroom. And so, like, the last thing I wanted was for me to call, help cause this mess. Mm -hmm. Then she wakes up and has to clean it up the next day after I'm gone or whatever. So, like, I made sure Terrible. everything was clean. Yes. And, um... My favorite. It was just, it was like, we both ended up getting, like, two hours of sleep after everything was said and done. Um... And I felt, I still just felt terrible, dude. I was like, dude, it happens to everyone. Dude, like, can you, like, I was, like, my heart was beating out of my chest. And I was like, my shirt was soaking wet when oh, I was done. Oh my God. Not from the poop water, but from no, the no, no, sweat. No, no, just from like sweat. And like, cause I was like just cleaning nonstop and like moving furniture, making sure there was no water under things. Oh, God. Like putting the furniture back. Like, and like, you can't help but be mad at yourself. You're like, oh, I did this. That's exactly how I felt. Like, no matter what, no matter how much we talked it through, no matter how much she was like, don't even worry about it. Like, it's not a big deal. It's fun. Uh, you know, I had a good time. Um, you know, even like after the whole thing, she joked and said, I guess you guys have a new topic for your podcast next week. I was like, oh my God, you're the, you're the, you're wonderful. And here we are. We do. And yeah. And so I was like, you know, we is there thought... any details you want me to leave out? And she was like, no, it should be fine. I was like, okay, cool. So, wow. What a gal. Um, I love and like, that. It's funny because it was a situation where I literally thought it was going to traumatize me forever. Yeah. And I'm looking back on it, not even like two days later. And it's like a pleasant experience. It's a fucking amazing memory. It's funny. You owned it. I went through this tragedy with this person and <laughs> they like, it's brought you closer. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's brought, yeah, for I, yeah, and we, I we actually jokingly refer to it as the ship apocalypse now. And that's incredible. Uh, and that aligns. It was unbelievable. That aligns. I have, so I have two stories. Uh, one, well, I'll just tell you. Uh, and I think that the moral of this story, uh, again, if we're trying to provide value for the listeners, just own it. Just, you know, shit happens and own it. <laughs> I have, that has never been a more apropos use of that saying. So I, uh, back in my early touring days, you're touring in a van. You're basically staying with people, uh, off the the kind goodwill of them saying, hey, yeah, like you can crash on our couch or you're coming through. You don't yeah, normally Yeah, for have... sure, for sure. It was kind of before I've, Airbnb. I mean, like, yeah, to, was... to, to speak to that point, like that happens with me at magic events. Like people are like, hey, would oh, you like yeah. to come pre-release when they are, go to F&M and you can crash with me and like it'll be a cool experience. And, like, yeah, that's a cool yeah, experience. It's right. kind of more fun than a hotel. You get to meet people. You get oh, to, for sure, because yeah. you're connecting with an audience. And it's, yeah, like it's saving your ass because like normally like as an early touring musician or band it's or expensive anyone, to find yeah, like a hotel for like four dudes and like... So that was huge like that's how we survived on early touring was just van post on social media and at the hey show, we're coming through anybody have a place who so wants to host this and we, usually the thing is people would love to do they it love it, it so you have so like multiple good. options you're like please post pictures of your place yeah all right let yeah, us know how can. many bathrooms it honestly got to that point where it was sick and like talk thinking back to it we maybe out of all of the times hundreds of stays two or three were bad like that's good that's people a good number like, oh, weren't you yeah. scared of this no but we are in a town, I don't even remember where, Middle America, smaller town, and there had to have been some kind of college there. Oh, let and, me clarify one thing. Yes. Uh, when I was done toweling up all the shit, oh, yeah. 
I made sure to use the Swiffer, the Swiffer wet jet. And you wet jet And I it? went all over the floor, every floor, the bathroom floor, the living room tile, like the, the, the whatever, everything, so that it was at least somewhat sanitary what after just the water. Way. That's admirable. Like I wanted to, like, because, dude, I was so embarrassed. And I was like, the last thing I want her to do is, like, have this, like, mess to deal with. Like I'm, That's admirable, and I'm glad you clarified. I just that want, says a lot about Because, you. yeah, you mentioned something, and I was like, oh, wait, I just want to make sure that, like... This guy will Swiffer your floors. He might wreck your, your bathroom, but he'll Swiffer your <laughs> but floors But he'll try after. to make it right. He'll try, to, can, he'll try to make it right. Honestly, dude, come clog my toilet anytime. You're the ideal toilet clogging guest. You've, you did everything right. And, and I I will try... It's, I'll try my best not to, to avoid the situation. But if you do, you now know what to do, and you're the ideal toilet. Also, this time guest. I will 100% go to shutting the water off the first. At, oh at my god, that's the takeaway. that was because I've never had to do that. And I'm so glad we're talking about this because I know it will happen to me in my life. It just that's does. the literal first thing to do. I've D- never thought just about it. Just turn the water off. I've never been in a situation where the toilet was flowing to such a degree where I needed to shut the water off at the source. Yep. And so it was. Not, it just it wasn't on my mind. That's such a good takeaway. I really like that, and I'm, I'm glad that we're bringing value to a podcast about nothing. Continue your story. So, uh, Middle America, and for some reason, I guess there's a college there. We end up. <laughs> for some reason, I guess there's a college there. Well, like it's like a random town, small town. For some reason. <laughs> for education. Well, I don't know if they're doing in the middle of America, educating themselves. Who, who does that? So it's uh, it was an unexpected, like it was like a bunch of frat girls, like in a city where I was like, oh, really? Okay. Like it was like a, I don't know. I just, and it was always our bass player that would find places to stay. Typical and bass player. we didn't really ask him questions. It was just like, oh, he's cool. Like, show all up. right. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. So like he just had a good system. So we show up. And it was like, oh, cool. It was like, uh, it was like a frat or I'm sorry, not frat. Uh, it was a dorm like, uh, setting. Yeah. College housing. It seems small then. It was, it was oh, small. I feel like this is the point you're getting to. You know where it's going. It was small and it's it not, was like, it's not four people of, big, man. Yeah. Like it was like a sorority. I meant to say sorority. So it was like a bunch of like college girls. Fratern- and only- oh, oh, inter- it was an actual sorority. I mean, it was, yeah, I think they were a part of that. And it was like the college housing and only one of the girls knew the band and the others were just like, yeah, cool. Like whatever. We don't care. So we get there. There's one toilet. There's like 600 of us, right? This experience includes doing anything that makes a special deal. <laughs> that was a really good comment in the chat. Should we read it now? Cause we paused. And- yeah. The, someone in the chat said you should use this experience to fuel us st- to f- as fuel to start a new company that makes special deep throat toilets. The quotes though, do the air quotes quote air quote, deep throat toilet. There it is. Yeah. So sorority sorority. There's so many of us from the band in the small apartment and there's one bathroom and there's oh. only one of the girls that knew the band and cared. And all the others were just like humoring it. We've been traveling for a long time. I didn't know guys could, like, stay over at sororities. Isn't there, like, a... It wasn't like there was a gatekeeper. just, like, a dormitory thing. Yeah, maybe it was just more like apartment housing. Maybe I'm putting too much onto the sorority side. I know, okay. But it was a college apartment. Four girls lived there. Only one cared about the band. It was very small. Maybe three. It was, like, a, there was one bathroom. It couldn't have been four. There was no, no way it would be a four or one. It was one bathroom. Or maybe the other bathrooms were in bedrooms that were occupied. I don't know. There's one bathroom. Either way, the point is you had access to one bathroom. And we had been on the road for a long time. And I had a travel poop. And it was time. How many days are we talking? I mean, one or two. But it was a travel poop. It was a road poop. It was I, I had driven all day. And finally, or it was all night. We got there early in the morning. It was like 6 in the morning by the time we get there. We did an all-nighter. I get there. I poop. Instantly, it is one of these quarter-sized toilets and you don't also when <laughs> you the, have, talking about the hole goes down right yeah and when you have an emergency poop you don't surveil the you, you don't you don't look it, sometimes you don't even notice that there's no toilet paper that's a whole other emergency that because yeah you have to it's right just go time. it's the water situation where i'm like i have different things on my mind exactly in exactly. this moment so that's poop. a problem for future andrew exactly so i poop and sure enough i clog it and it's a bad clog and it, it it's there's no plunger. Oh, that's the worst. There's when, no plunger. I don't, I don't shit in it. This is one thing I do do. I don't shit do do. <laughs> ah. Topical. This is one thing I do do. I don't shit in a bathroom unless I see a plunger. Okay, but here's the thing. It was go time. It was emergency time. No, There's I, one I'll, ba- I'll close. I'll, I'll close the door. It was time. All right. Dude, no, that's fair. Time. I do know that too. I don't, I didn't even, was, if, you're not hearing me. It yeah, was time. I didn't even have time to catalog if there's toilet paper, let alone a plunger. That's, All right. That's fair. That's fair. Sometimes they keep them in little cabinets. Are you going to check that's little true. cabinets? 
So no, you need to keep that thing out. I as that a is good not a host. Thing. Yes, but also they're be, not expecting to host. Also because it's a device that gets wet on the bottom, so you don't really want to put it back in a cabinet after I mean, that. I, some people do the. I, okay, look. So I'm just talking. To, I'm just talking plunger etiquette here. That's all. I know, and it should be more common. But uh, yeah, so we it happens, and I'm looking at it, and again, I'm the guest. They were very kind to me. I don't want to upset these people. And here I am in a shitty situation. Are you the first one in? Did you get the pun? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you are so proud of it. You're like, no, no, we're not moving on to that question. <laughs> yeah. You will acknowledge my shit pun. Yeah. Are you the first man in? Are you the first yep. responder? Mm-hmm. No, well, and there's a line of people waiting to use the bathroom. Yeah, that's worse. But I wanted to make sure like no one else had a chance to go. So what do you think I did? Okay. All right, okay. so what situation? You flushed? I flushed. It didn't go down. It's clogged. Is it? Is it high t- up? So here's the thing. We got high tide. There's there's different there's different there's different. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, severity level. Of severity, severity levels. Right. Was the shit not visible, or was it like did it just not all the way go down and there's still there's you still still visible and it's still not flushing all the way? I want to say visible toilet paper covering not overflowing high tide. Well, okay. So the first flush never. I don't think that ever overflows it. Right, exactly. Because and you're I just not getting there. that much water. But I also stopped there and said, well, I'm not going to flush again. I know what right, because, yeah, you're like, I know where this goes. And what do you do? So I stand and I look and I panic. Yeah, this but is where I you look. have to evaluate. You're like, what are my options? So, this is a real survival situation. Like if you're in the woods, in the wilderness, mm-hmm. uh, and you approach a bear, mm-hmm. I think the same survival skills kick in <laughs> as when you clog a toilet I think and you right. don't know what to do. Yeah. It's you're like, like you have to punch the okay, shark in the nose. Let me look at my options. Do we have any tools around here with which I can use right. so I do to de-escalate? Afterwards, and I look, and there's no tools. I have zero resource. And I know that I, there's no plunger. There's nothing. I don't, I'm not going to flush again. But by this time, by the time it's taken me to think and survey the situation, the water has gone down a little bit, making it actually look worse. Well, oh, kind it looks of, worse. It kind of looks worse. And so what I did... I, I gathered as much uh, humility as I could, and it's also I, I, if I, if you're gonna do it, I think you do. It's also uh, courage. Courage. You're right. And I wash my hands and I walk out of the bathroom. There wasn't even spray. And I walk out of the Jeez, bathroom. This is not a poop ready bathroom. And man. we've just met this girl. We've never stayed with her before. Or, I don't know. I don't know from experience or not because I haven't had the discussion enough times. Perhaps in a sorority, in a bathroom what is that is predominantly female, mm. this issue just doesn't come up as much. Well, and that's my thing is like that's that's I thought about that and I'm like, how do you not have a plunger? And then I'm like, well, girls don't poop, so Maybe that's they, obviously yeah, right. Why. If you're not pooping to begin with, like you don't, you're not going to plunge your well, urine. Bullshit. So I, yeah. it's not a fair genetic quality. Correct, I know, but it is so, what it is. I look and I swallow my pride and I walk out of the bathroom and I find this kind girl that we've just met and I said <laughs> hi <laughs> there's no easy way to tell you this but I've clogged your toilet with my poop <laughs> <laughs> so you know let me tell you something amazing yeah. you don't look like a guy that can <laughs> clog a toilet with his poop I know that makes it worse for some reason. Like, I feel like any poop that would clog a toilet actually weighs more than you do. I know, dude. I poop little deer poops. <laughs> like rabbit pellets? Yeah. That's so, unbelievable to me, man. So, yeah. And God, I just, it's... I had to own it. I walk out. I'm like, there's no easy way to tell you this, but I clogged your toilet with my poop. And and that's the other discrepancy you have to, that's the other, uh, not discrepancy, but uh, distinction you have to make. Like, when I this clogged. happened, for to me, she was like, so is it a is it a poop clog or is it a toilet paper clog? And I was like... It's poop clog. <laughs> the thing my body produced was too large for this hole it in wasn't the man It was my lack unit. of judgment of toilet paper. Right. It I was, didn't, because that's just like, oops, I used too much. Mm-hmm. Silly me. I was, <laughs> I was too concerned with being clean. That's right. You know, that's nope. just like, well, I, I overdid it in my cleanliness. No, instead it's like, my body is incapable of producing things at a normal size. Yep. So, uh, I clogged your, your device. Yeah. So I told her and again, she laughed at the situation and I was I just I sat there and owned it in my embarrassment and they went and found a plunger in another bathroom or area obviously because you keep your plunger not in the bathroom that doesn't make any sense and I plunged it and it was fine but I think the moral of all of this whole story is be the ideal house guest and own the poop and own the cloth another great moral for the story is that and turn the fucking water off and 
<laughs> yeah, hundred percent that. The, another moral for the story is that you want to approach these situations. Uh, there's a lot of situations in life that are like asking someone out on a date. Like, you think it's going to be this huge, life-altering, like, crippling deal that you're going to have to go through, right? Mm. A lot of times you're just like, hey, you want to go out? And they're like, either A, they don't feel like it. And they're like, you know, not really. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm interested in someone else or whatever. Yeah. Or B, they're going to be like, yeah, I'd love to. Let's go. And it's going to be this fucking really simple situation. And that's it. But, like, we build it up because oh. it's these things that, like, we feel vulnerable about. Yes. So the vulnerability that we're feeling is, like, literally crippling us to actually confront other human beings about it because yeah. we feel like no way would this person ever reciprocate the things I'm feeling right now or the, this will never happen to you you know I am in that moment you are the only human being that has ever clogged a toilet That's exactly and you're a it. disgusting piece of shit literally yes you miss 100% of the shots you don't take Wayne Gretzky Michael, Michael Scott. Scott it's a great Michael Scott quote oh man so yeah own your own your clogs ask that person out yeah be the ideal guest I mean, heck, I think that that's a great place here's to end. A, here's it. a great oh, moral. I was about to end it, and then you got no, 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 just no, okay. like, like to sum it up. Yeah, to th- to 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 summarize, own your flaws, and accept that they were mistakes, and people will be understanding. For a podcast about nothing, that was a very poetic and beautiful statement. I think it's only. I think it's only kind of about nothing. I think so. I love that. I think it's superficially about nothing. You're right. But the nothing is really something. We're addressing issues of everyday life and using our stories and experiences to get to the bottom of things. Sometimes it's the bottom of the toilet where the clog exists. Or the bottom of the toe that's broken. And sometimes you just don't have that auger to go in there. Or that x-ray. At the bottom of the toe. I think this was a great episode, too. Thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate you guys. Be sure to check us out on Spotify, on iTunes, on Stitcher, wherever you can find podcasts. And uh, you can also check Andrew out at Andrew uh, FTW uh, at at Twitter. I I literally get Twitter and Twitter confused constantly. It's it's at Andrew underscore FTW on Instagram, Twitter, Twitter. I all, guess really that's all the, the social media I use, yeah. uh, you can find me at, at Frank Lepore on the same places if you're looking and uh, thank you guys so much for listening really appreciate you I'm having a lot of fun with this I am as well and I think it's I like how naturally these episodes go so uh, we'll see you guys hopefully next week yeah thank you guys for listening we love you guys I don't know if we're actually pausing on Twitch or whatever I did a peace sign I don't mind and, and, and to you YouTube Have a good night. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. We'll see you next time.